Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know the game as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. All right. Hello coders. Time for part 17. This one uh, is one of the exciting ones, as far as I'm concerned at least, uh, because it's sprite animation. And uh, even though Georg says in his uh, accompanying tutorial part 17 that it's a small, uh, small edition, uh, I do not agree. Um, it may not be a, a huge amount of code, but... Um, uh, it is, uh, uh, well, um, what do I call it? It's rather comprehensive. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things involved. So I'm going to first uh, show you what the game looks like uh, now. Uh, you'll be amazed, uh, I think. Uh, let me uh, increase the picture there so you can see it. You, as you can see, our our protagonist here, has uh, a shape and not only that uh he's animated look at that and you can you can see as well that i can now jump to this ledge we'll we'll get back to that in a minute though oh i have i have a, a shooting animation i have a left animation, a right animation, a walking animation. Look at it. It's like a recoil action. As you, you can also see that there's a part uh, of the background that is white and a part that is black. Um, not entirely sure what that is about, but we'll have a look at it. Fire that. I cannot pick up this pickup. See that? That's a bug. I cannot pick up. Oh, I can pick up that one. Anyway, we have a fully animated. Oh, I picked it up. A fully animated character now. It no longer changes color when I shoot. Um, oh, and I've got one. Oh, I got one level. It actually plays like a game now. Um, the character appears to move faster as well than it did before. Definitely moving faster. That jump is hard. Uh, definitely moving faster than the enemies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I changed to the next level. All right. Okay, well, that's what it looks like. And now we're going to look at how we've come to this, um, to this point. I think we should start uh, with looking at the... Uh, at the sprite design. Now, in C64 Studio, under the uh, window, there is a sprite editor. Um, I haven't been really successful uh, working with the sprites using that one. So uh, at a certain point, I cannot remember exactly which one, but we also got the C64 Spriter, and there it is. And it may be a, a little bit too small, um, for you to see, but I can zoom in on one sprite, and uh, uh, when you load it up, uh, it's shown like this. Uh, but this pattern, where like some of the of the bits are combined, you can always tell uh, some multicolor sprite. So if I turn on multicolor, I've copied the uh, the colors from the code, and this is uh, what. Uh, one of the sprites looks like. If I go to the overview, you can see, you know, what the rest. Of, these are all still in, uh, uh, not in multicolor, just uh, what do you call it, mono. <laughs> um, but it's important to realize uh, how these are organized. If accounting from left to right, sprite zero, sprite one. Sprite one is still the enemy sprite, the unanimated one. But the player sprite has like uh, a standing one to the right, 
this is perhaps a, a walking one to the right or maybe just a standing one to the right with a gun. This is a recoil right and left, a walking right and left, walking right, left, walking right, left. Looking at these in detail is, um, is a lesson in itself, how to animate a sprite. I'm not going to go into that. Walking left, right. I think also walking left, right. These are also walking left, right. I think all of these are walking left, right. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But there's a recoil uh, where the where the gun goes up. See, one, two, three, four. And they're organized in pairs. So the, the, uh, the even ones are going right and the uneven ones are going left. This is important because the code um, uses that. So that's enough of that. Uh, let's uh, put the sprite away and look at the code, actually. Um, I'm at the bottom uh, because we always first look at the data, which is, uh, which is again, a wise idea. Um, I'm going to look at these ones. There are three new tables here. Um, yeah, uh, this table uh, is indexed by... Um, um, by object type, that's why it's uh, called type start sprite, and it describes which sprite is used for um, each object, you know, which initial sprite. So for the player, it's uh, sprite player stand right. The value of that is 66. Uh, I'll, I'll get back in, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you how that works uh, in a minute when I... Um, when I get to that code, but the, uh, this table is indexed by type. Um, uh, each uh, object has a color, and um, so these are just values by type. Enemies are always colored red, and the player is colored ten, which I just don't know. It's probably a gray or something. That's the 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 mono color i forget what what the term is for multicolor uh, uh but not multicolor and then there's um uh, a table indexed by type which determines uh, this is a boolean table so this describes whether or not the uh, object is a multicolor sprite yes or no you can change this per sprite on the commodore 64 um then there are some new tables uh, here. Um, apparently, there is a sprite falling table now. So this is no longer indexed by sprite type, but by sprite number. This will indicate whether or not a sprite is falling. Again, a Boolean table. Uh, Boolean meaning that it's you know a, a logical value zero is false and anything other than zero is true uh there's a sprite animation position so we can cycle through each sprite's animation at this point only the player sprite is being animated so only this value will change and there is an animation delay which means that we don't animate each sprite in uh, every single frame we can skip frames so that's that. And one thing I'm particularly uh, proud of, <laughs> I, can, I can say, is that Georg has, found, has figured out by this time that his jump table isn't being used. The first position in his jump table wasn't being used, um, and which meant that we couldn't jump very high. So what he's done, he's applied the exact same solution I did. It's just insert an extra eight... This describes the number of pixels that you jump uh, in the first frame, and then uh, remove a zero at the end. So he's fixed it in the in exactly the same I did, quick and dirty, but it works. <laughs> um, I think there's a change in one of the levels in level one. There's a there's like an extra line somewhere, an extra horizontal line. It's which one? Six sixteen. 616596. I can't even see it here. Oh, this one. This line is new. 
Um, nothing to write home about. And uh, I think that's the data changes. Now, um, most of the animation stuff is done in player control. I should say all of it really. Let's let, let's before we go actually into the code, I'm going to scroll up because there's some values that we need to look at as well. Uh, these have been added, by the way, uh, uh, some kernel hooks. These are addresses of um, routines that will allow you to, in this case, get a character from the keyboard. Uh, set a message. This is for setting uh, names, uh, file names, um, and uh, actually loading uh, data from uh, a device. Now, I already know that this, uh, at least I think I know, that this game does not uh, do loading, at least not doesn't load levels. Maybe it, it saves and loads scores. I, I'm not entirely sure, but... These are, this is just a preparation. We're not doing anything. <coughs> Excuse me. We're not doing anything with that in this code at the moment. Um, <clears throat> now, this is important. Remember that uh, at the base of the screen memory, uh, this is where we're all, you know, everything that you write in this memory goes to the screen directly. At the end, starting from this position, is a table of values, which describes where the um, the the sprite shape comes from. The number, this, you know, if if you if you wrote a number to uh, to the sprite pointer base, which describes the shape of the first sprite, the player sprite, that number is multiplied by sixty four, and that gives you a memory location. Uh, starting from uh, the Vic base, uh, uh, and in that location is is where the the sprite shapes are stored. So, sprite base being sixty four, that happens to be sixty four uh, in this case. Um, so the the first sprite shape for the player is stored in the first location. Um, and then the sprite enemy. Basically, this describes. I'll pull up the the spider again. You see, so sprite player first position, then uh, one. There is the enemy. Stand right, stand left, stand recoil right, stand recoil left. Walk right one, walk left one, walk right two, and so on, and so on. So uh, walk right. This is one, two, three, four. This would be jump right, jump left, fall right, fall left, jump recoil. So there's some jump and fall and recoil combination sprites as well. This setup is basically described here. These values, if you if you uh, write the values that are on the left side of the equal sign here into the sprite pointer base, you the Vic will will use that sprite shape. And in that way, you can, you know, by changing the value at the right time, you can change the sprite shape and you can animate it. Well, now you just have to work out how to do that and at which moment. So um, there are some, let's look, I'm just scrolling down to the start. Um uh, let's see, we're setting multicolors here for the character set, but we're also setting multicolors for the uh, for the sprites. The way in this uh, in which this works is you can um, set whether or not a sprite is multicolor, yes or no. And if it is, it'll use these multicolors uh, because there are two. If, if you use multicolor, each pixel becomes two pixels. Uh, bits wide so you have four combinations uh, one being the background one being the sprite color and the two others being multicolor one and two so 11 and one are fixed multicolors so that's uh, that's been added uh, maybe we'll see a change there as well 
what we also see in the main game loop now is that at the after the weight frame, uh, the Vic border color is uh, colored white. You can see that because uh, the weight frame is at the bottom of the screen and the lower part was white. And it does all this stuff. And then uh, after all doing all that stuff, the border color becomes uh, black. I think that Georg has done this to uh, be sure that um, uh, that he's, uh, you know, th that his work still fits within one frame. You know, uh, as soon as the work that goes on in here uh, takes too long, uh, more of the of the border color will remain white. Uh, but you know, uh, for as it stands now, uh, we're still using all kinds of delays. Uh, so. Uh, there's, there's still more room to do that. I think by the time you start uh, chipping away uh, off the off the the delays, you'll know that you're coming close to um, what the Commodore 64 can do within a frame. Um, and we go down. There's some to dos there. Blah de blah. Uh, we are no longer uh, coloring uh, the player sprite white. Uh, when we shoot, which is what we did before. Now we can just see by the animation. And I think we should go... Um, there's been some minor changes, some basically some renaming. I'm not going to show that. There was a, a test uh, that's been renamed. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing major. Um, we d of course, we do now have let's see not falling five five two right we we now have to up the, we uh, because we're using this sprite falling table that they, i'm not entirely sure why this is being done we we did have a player fall position um but that just described um at which point in the in the fall the the player was, uh, but that was just for the player. And this sprite falling table is meant for all of the sprites. So I think that we're going to be migrating from this player fall position to the uh, to the sprite falling table. So this is we're we're now doing things double still. Uh, no worries though. When player fell, you see player fell. We've detected player. F uh, actually fell through, that's when we set the first element. We Again, we do it this way because this expression means the first element of the sprite falling table, which is al always the player. So we can just set it to one to know that the sprite is falling. Um, but the real uh, interesting stuff is not left press. This is we're we're in the player control uh, code, of course. Now, so we're we're reading the joystick and we're deciding whether or not uh, 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 you know we're going left or right. So, um, yeah, n maybe I should go to uh, right. So this is the start where we, uh, the, the point at which we start reading the joystick. As you can see, there are two calls to player move left, uh, which makes the player move left twice as fast because we're moving left uh, two positions uh, within each frame. Also, each step, because this player move left actually checks for blockage, yes or no. So each step is actually checked. We can make it even, uh, make it move even faster by. Uh, adding more player moves left, you know, we, we can increase the player speed. It, it it would be nice to create a pickup which uh, which created extra speed, and and you would you know uh, design a loop here that increases the number of times player move left is called uh, as long as that uh, pickup is is uh, valid. So, you know, those are things that you could just add. Um, but the nice thing is. Uh, we're going to animate the player. We're going to test whether he's falling. 
uh, in that case, no animation is needed. Whether he's jumping, no, anima uh, no animation is needed. Otherwise, animation is needed, and we're going to increase the sprite animation delay, again, for the first sprite in the series. And we wait eight frames before we do the next animation. Um, so, you know, we, we, we increase the, the animation, we load it, we compare it to eight. Uh, if it's not eight, then there's no animation needed. If there is animation needed, we first reset the animation delay. And all we do is we increase the sprite animation position. So, um, and then we load it, we end it with three, and then we store it back. Now, what does this do? If you end something with uh, three, you mean that uh, th this that means that all the other uh, bits uh, are zero. So it's going to look like this. I'm, I'm going to just uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, three. I think that's uh, six, seven, eight. This is three. So if you end something, is that three? Oh, darn it. <laughs> Binary. Uh, I'm going to go with programmer. I'm going to go with decimal three. Binary. Right, 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 right. Now this is <laughs> proof. That's three. <laughs> because that's one, that's two, and two of them are three. Okay. Um, so if you end a value with three... Um, as soon as the value becomes 4, which means 100, um, it just turns back to 0. So this, uh, this anima sprite animation position can never grow beyond uh, the value of 3 in this case. So uh, basically what this means is that we just increase the sprite animation position and it's nothing more than a counter. It goes from 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, and then back to 0. That's all it does. So, and that just describes an animation position that does not give us the sprite shape uh, per se. Um, moving right is much the same. See, you see exactly the same code. Um, falling right. This is the first, uh, this is the recoil animation, but I wanted to. Uh, look at a, a regular situation where there's no recoil. Now this is this is where this this piece of code here is where the animation is done. So this is where the sprite animation position is converted uh, to a sprite shape. So the first thing is we do uh, is we uh, we do uh, an arithmetic shift left, which means that we multiply it by two. Uh, we do that because we have to uh, skip uh, one each time because we're going in one certain direction. So if sprite animation position is zero, uh, you multiply by two, we, you still get zero. But if it's one it becomes two, so it's not zero, it's not one, it's two, so it'll be this one. Then we clear the carry, so we're gonna add, and we're gonna add sprite direction. Sprite direction is either zero or one, uh, zero being right and one uh, being left. So if we're going right, uh, we'll be uh, adding zero. If we're going left, we'll be adding one and we'll be in the other um, you know, we'll, we'll be in the uneven range of sprite uh, shapes. Then, because we are uh, walking, we have to add the sprite, uh, the sprite player walk right one. So that's that one. And that's what we store. See? And in the next, uh, uh, in the next loop, we're going to increase the sprite animation position again. We're going to, if there's no animation and there's no falling... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, we get the same thing again. So, uh, but the sprite animation will have grown by one. So we end up here and the next one we end up there and then we end up there. And then, uh, when we do it again, uh, it goes back to zero. So we end up there. So it keeps looping in that uh, tiny little loop. Um, when we do a recoil, the calculation, uh, this is the recoil anim, uh, anim is, it's just a little bit different. We take the sprite animation, we add uh, sprite direction, sprite walk. 
We add eight because uh, this is where that happens. So if we stand here, one, two, three, oh, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the uh, the recoil, and and so on and so on. So I could go through them all, but but you will see that by adding and by shifting, you will. Uh, be pointing at a certain location uh, inside the, uh, uh, the, the 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 sprite shapes, and eventually, at the end of player control, which I'm getting to, at least. Let me find it. Store sprite direction store. Oh no! Right, right. This is. As soon as you do this, uh, as soon as you store uh, whatever sprite shape you have in the sprite pointer base, uh, that's you know the next pass of the raster line will will paint the new sprite. So, uh, and that and that is basically uh, it. To be fair, there there are no other um, uh, you know I I could go through all the animations, but basically. Uh, th they are all the same in in essence. It's it's getting from a a, sp a sprite animation position to its actual uh, shape, and then writing it to the uh, sprite pointer base, and that is it. I'm scrolling through the changes here, but that is really it. All right. There's a yeah, well there's a there's a clear object loop. Let's let's see if I can find that. Um clear object loop. So when we build the screen, there's some errors in this version of the of C64 Studio. If I select I get a color clash. So I'm um, not sure what that is about, but um, um, so when we build the screen, we set all sprites to not active, to not falling, uh, to their original animation position, and to the uh, delay of uh, you know the first delay is just zero. Um, and then seventeen twenty nine reset all items, right. I think this is an attempt of clearing the. Um, oh, this this may actually uh, solve the bug of uh, of leaving the items. Let's let's test that. If I go back into the game, what we used to have is that when we uh, after we'd uh, one two three four five one two three four five and this one one two three four five. Right, so remember those two. Now I'm gonna kill this one. Uh, I used to have a situation where the uh, one, two, three, four, five, where the old items uh, would reappear, but that has been one, two, three, four, five. See, that is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Woo, woo. One, two, three, four, five. See. I think that is actually solved now. Yeah, just by clearing the items table, we don't get the items back. So that's that's just a woohoo. <laughs> oh. Uh, so players moving twice as fast as enemies. That's good. Um, so that's uh, that's this go uh, this code. Just uh, clear all the all the items when you when you build a screen. Um, let's look at this. There's a little. Other thing, 1959, scrolling down, 1959, where are we here? Oh, right there, when, we, when we're drawing objects, 59, we enable the sprites, we set, okay. Yeah, we get the sprite type from the sprite active table, we load its uh, start color and actually store it in the vic uh in the vic chip so that we set each sprite's start color and we get 
uh, we test whether or not it's multicolor. If it isn't, then we clear multicolor here, and otherwise we set it there. So multicolor done. Oh, that's that's some uh, some some init stuff that's been added, and that's it. So I'm gonna leave you with this picture because it looks nice. I think. Um, uh, we're animating. We're animating a player sprite, and I've sort of seen a way of doing it, and I'm glad that I know now how to do it. We can animate. The next thing, of course, is animating the enemy. So I don't know if that is going to happen in uh, part 18, but for now, this has been 17. Thank you for watching and commenting, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>